Good evening, I'm Kevin Christopher. And I'm Angie Bevan. And tonight for Nancy Cox, thanks for joining us at 6. Rounds of heavy rain expected to soak the bluegrass overnight. What else is new? Meteorologist Jill Sweat in for Bill Mack tonight with a look at your storm tracker forecast. And everything has been pretty hit or miss as we've been going throughout the day today, and that story will continue going forward tonight. But still, some of the storms that are out there are packing quite a punch, especially in northern Kentucky. These storms blossom back near Louisville around 4 o'clock, still hanging on as they're crossing the I-75 corridor. Rain finally starting to let up in Frankfort and much of Franklin County. Still some heavy rain popping up in southern Scott County near Georgetown. But the greatest concentration of that heavy rain now closing in on Cynthia and Harris. Anderson County. Meanwhile, another cell has popped up in Anderson County and that's continuing to track closer to Lawrenceburg at this hour. Meanwhile, across southern Kentucky, activity has been really sparse. And any showers that have popped up have only produced some light rain. But still, some scattered showers will be around for the first high school football games of the season as we'll track temperatures in the 70s. So pack the rain gear and of course, Mom and dad be prepared maybe for some muddy uniforms to come home later on this evening. I'll have more details what you can expect for the weekend coming up in a few minutes in your storm tracker forecast. All right, Jill, thanks. A lightning strike is believed to have sparked a massive house fire in northern Kentucky. The fire started around 1230 this morning on North Oak Drive in Villa Hills. That's in Kenton County. Officials say the two story home is a loss. Neighbors tell a Cincinnati TV station flames were shooting out of the garage. No injuries were reported and firefighters say no one was home at the time. The hunt is on for a man charged in connection with a home invasion earlier this month. It happened on Chelsea Woods Drive in southeast Lexington. Lee Searcy has more in the big story at six. Police say 18 year old Trey Whitaker Blackburn was involved in a shooting and robbery at this Chelsea Woods home. This is what we know. August 2nd, police rushed to the house after a man inside was shot in the leg during the robbery. Trey Whitaker Blackburn has warrants for robbery first and assault first, stemming from this home invasion. Police tell us Whitaker Blackburn and four others drove here to the home, but only Whitaker Blackburn and two others went inside the house, where a man was then shot in the leg. He survived. Neighbors who live around here tell us violent crimes just don't happen on their street. We talked to one man who hopes Whitaker Blackburn will do the right thing. He didn't want to show his face. He should turn himself in, basically, um, face the consequences of his actions. Um, the longer he runs, the more difficult it will be um, when you face the court system and just make it easier on yourself. This isn't the only robbery Whitaker Blackburn may have been involved in. Police say he's also a suspect in a robbery on Bowie Drive earlier this week. Detectives believe he and Jamari Taylor robbed victims of cash and firearms. Taylor has been arrested. If you see Trey Whitaker Blackburn, you're asked to call Lexington Police. Covering the news in Lexington, Lee Searcy, LEX 18 News. Police arrested the accused getaway driver in the home invasion. Dylan Edwards is charged with first degree robbery. A Frankfurt man accused of killing his ex-girlfriend has been ordered to undergo a mental health evaluation. This morning, a judge ordered Derek Garten to undergo the evaluation at the Kentucky Correctional Psychiatric Center. He's accused of killing Margaret Smith inside her home on Meadow Glen Drive back in July. He was arrested four days later after a standoff at a Lexington motel. He's due back in court for a preliminary hearing on October 2nd. His trial has been scheduled for December 3rd. After a report revealed more than a thousand children were sexually abused by priests in Pennsylvania, Lexington's former bishop called for change in the Catholic Church in a special mass today. Bishop Ronald Gaynor, who now leads the Harrodsburg, Pennsylvania Diocese, is accused of covering for two abusive priests. Carolina Buchek reports. From the songs... To the opening words. With this noon mass today for the forgiveness of sins, we begin a period of penance. It was clear the theme of today's special mass in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania was remorse for some horrible sins. There have been other reports about child sex abuse within the Catholic Church, but never on this scale. Bishop Ronald Gaynor spoke about the grand jury report that revealed more than a thousand kids were sexually abused by about 300 priests in Pennsylvania. These horrific actions 
by some members of the clergy, which violated the dignity and innocence of children, must be absolutely eliminated from the church's life. Bishop Gaynor used to be the bishop of the diocese in Lexington. He left for Harrisburg in 2014, and now he's accused of not doing enough to help the kids. And the failure of bishops to use effective and timely means to protect the children entrusted to the church's care. In fact, the report says Gaynor wrote to the Vatican and asked for two abusive priests to not be defrocked. But the diocese insists he worked to get the men out of the church. Covering the news, Carolina Buchak, LEX 18 News. Governor Matt Bevin has ordered flags to half-staff in honor of a Kentucky serviceman killed in action during the Korean War. Years after his death, funeral services will finally be held for Private First Class Joe Stanton Elmore tomorrow. Elmore was one of 2,500 U.S. and 700 Republic of Korea soldiers assigned to the 31st Regimental Combat Team. Elmore was reported missing in December 1950. He was 20 years old. 67 years later, his remains have been identified. A funeral service will be held tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock at Albany United Church of the Nazarene in Clinton County. A spokesperson for the ride-sharing service Lyft says it's looking into the concerns of a Lexington mother who shared her story on LEX 18 News last night at 11. Cynthia Parker says her son put his three-year-old sister in the lift yesterday morning thinking it was her ride to daycare. She says the driver took the unaccompanied child nine miles across town. Lyft released this statement today. These allegations are deeply concerning. We have reached out to the mother and have deactivated the driver while we investigate. It is against Lyft's terms of service to transport a minor without an adult present. And we stand ready to assist law enforcement in any investigation. Lexington police confirmed they responded to a call about what happened. The child was dropped off near Bryan Station Road. The top horse racing event on the fall circuit, the Breeders' Cup, is coming back to Lexington in two years. Michael Burke has details from today's exciting announcement at Keeneland. It's official. The announcement came today. Keeneland will play host to the 2020 season-ending Breeders' Cup. A call to the post of a different kind today. And in a lot of ways, it's the Breeders' Cup coming home. Back home in 2020, following today's announcement at Keeneland. This was a place that uh, spawned the Breeders' Cup. It's where most of the horses are born and raised. And they're into the stretch! Even politicians from opposite sides of the aisle can agree on this. It's so exciting to get the Breeders' Cup back again because it really does put an international spotlight on Lexington. And it's a real tribute and a testament to the professionalism and the, uh, the excellence of Keeneland. It was an excellent show in 2015, one deemed worthy of a curtain call. Now Lexington gets a second crack at becoming somewhat of a paddock for fans, giving the local economy a nice boost. It's perfect to have it here at Keeneland. Now the last time Keeneland hosted the Breeders' Cup, as mentioned back in 2015, we saw American Pharaoh win for the final time during what was obviously an incredible career, culminating with a triple crown season. Maybe that is a sign of things to come two years from now. Covering the news at Keeneland from the LEX 18 Mobile Newsroom, let's send it back to you. The 2020 Breeders' Cup at Keeneland is set for November 6th and 7th. Well, it was a rare opportunity for True Blue fans to snag a piece of Rupp Arena's history today. The arena, along with the convention center, held a surplus auction to make room for big changes coming to the Lexington Center. Claire Crouch has the details from the auction block. Show them each. Show them each. Today, Rupp's trash was dozens of Cats fans' treasure. Braving downpours in a parking lot full of puddles, True Blue fans showed up ready to dig deep in their pockets for a piece of the arena's history. It's a rare opportunity because some of this sold many, many years ago, but if you didn't get your chance, this is it. On the block, assorted items like signs, concession equipment, and even a 20-foot Christmas tree. But the most sought-after items were panels from the original floor in Rupp Arena. Well, I've got pieces of the Memorial Coliseum floor before they replaced it. I've got a uh, national championship banner that used to hang in Rupp, so it's it goes with the collection. Former cat Kyle Macy even turned up, marveling at fans paying hundreds of dollars for pieces of the floor he played on. Well, it's fun, and it's, you know, it's good for Rupp that they can get some value out of the old pieces. 
plans for the panels varied. One man saying he'd hope to make riding pins out of the wood. Others still trying to figure out what they'll do with this one-of-a-kind memorabilia. No, I, I have no idea what I'm going to do with them yet. Uh, my wife will probably get to decide what I do with that. All the proceeds go to Lexington Center as they prepare for their next chapter, a $241 million construction project. I sold. From the news in Lexington, Claire Crouch, LEX 18 News. Still ahead, a mule in Boyle County has become a hit on social media. And it's a surprise that has left a family scratching their heads. That's next on LEX 18 News at 6.